God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the 2019 and coronavirus that has claimed lives and has affected many. We pray for your grace for the people tasked with studying the nature and cause of this virus and its disease and of stemming the tide of its transmission. Guide the hands and minds of medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion, and of those governments and private agencies that must find cure and solution to this epidemic. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Grant us the grace to work for the good of all and to help those in need. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Mary, help of all Christians, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenz Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Hi guys, good day. So, medyo may mga, mga nagpupukpok. But, never mind that one. No? Uh, bawi na lang ako next time. Today, we will be discuss discussing about the Marple Annexes 1 to 4, which is the coverage of our prelim examinations. And, uh, the other annexes will be discussed in the midterm exams as to instructions on how the prelim exams will be given for the next week wala pa pong instructions but i will i will be trying my best to relay information sa inyo on how will how will the prelim examinations go on so for the meantime i'll be discussing to you or i will give you a run through quick run through of the annex 1 2 4 of the marple 7378 Now, these are the annexes of the MARPOL, the technical annexes of MARPOL. They are actually six, and uh, you need to memorize the title of each annexes. No? Annex 1 talks about regulations for the prevention of pollution by oil. Annex 2, regulations for the control of pollution by noxious liquid substances in bulk. Annex 3, prevention of pollution by harmful substances carried in sea in package form. Annex 4, Prevention of Pollution by Sewage from Ships Annex 5, Prevention of Pollution by Garbage from Ships Annex 6, Prevention of Air Pollution from Ships So, we usually to easily remember what are the 6 technical annexes, we just highlight kung ano yung main topic because these are actually all prevention for the pollution from ships, no? And uh, we have two types of pollution that can be generated from ships. You have the routine pollution and of course the accidental pollution. But uh, most probably these regulations would talk about how we'll be able to prevent pollution from ships. Now, uh, the key there sometimes no, we are using is the, the keywords, yun yung ginagawa nating mnemonics. The letters O, N, H, S G A the letters of the the first letter of the annexes or the, the topic of each annexes yun yung ginagawa nating mnemonics so you have your oil for the annex 1 2 noxious liquid substances n yung letter annex 3 h harmful substances carried in c in pack, carried at sea in package form, Annex 4, sewage, Annex 5, garbage, and air pollution. So for me, what I'm always using is the O-N-H-S-G-A. No, it depends on you and how you put words into those letters because uh, some of my previous students, they know how to put uh, words. No, For example, uh, uh, ako, I'm using Oto National High School, O-N-H-S, no, G-A. So pag tinanong ka, what are or what is the title of the 
and explore. For example, so you have to count O N H S. So S is for sewage. So an explore will be about prevention of pollution by sewage from ships. So to continue, I will be having Annex 1. Annex 1 talks about regulations for the prevention of pollution by oil. So this Annex 1, or this is technical annex of MARPOL, details the discharge requirements for the prevention of pollution by oil and oily materials. Uh, in some board exam no, and uh, exam examinations, they are paying particular into the dates like this one. Uh, came into force no and adopted no so the marple annex one began to be enforced on october 2 1983 you know the difference between the the word enforced no or when a certain regulation was enforced and was adopted magkaiba yon when we say it was adopted uh, uh all signatory countries or those countries who who signified followed the regulation. But when we say enforced, uh, kasi magkakaroon muna ng parang grace period wherein uh, magsistart na i-follow siya and then minor adjustments or major adjustments or adjustments will be happening for a span of time and then uh, that certain convention or that certain regulation will be enforced. It means that all signatory countries should as much as possible meet the requirements set by the regulations. So with regards to the Annex 1, if you comply, af if, if after the, the surveyor conducted an inspection to your ship, the flag state inspectors no, or the government of the party uh, conducted a survey to your ship and you complied with the Annex 1 or the regulations stated in the Annex 1, then you will be issued a Certificate of International Oil Pollution Prevention Certificate or ito yung tinatawag natin IOPP Certificate, International Oil Pollution Prevention Certificate. And mostly, uh, um, mostly uh, uh, all ships, no, which, uh, which of course, no, uh, carries bunker and all, all types of oil, no, especially oil tankers natin, should uh, carry the certificate. And actually all ships naman because of course, our propulsion system is being uh, run by the, or being, uh, or it is using bunker fuel, no? So we have oil discharge monitoring and control system. Oil tankers, especially for this Annex 1, no, should follow the, the this regulation. Oil discharge monitoring and control system is being required for oil tankers of 150 gross tonnage and above. No, and they should carry this oil discharge monitoring and control system, which should be approved by the administration. You have to take note also that any discharge into the sea of oil or oily mixtures shall be prohibited. Hindi po allowed ang pagtapon ng ating oily mixtures. No, what happens, for example, if it passes through the oily water separator, uh, or or those devices that would separate the oil and the uh, the water or the bilge water natin or or the ano natin no so it will actually the, the the residues of the oil will be actually stored in our slops or slop tanks no tawag natin slops and then it will be stored on uh, on the slop tanks however you will be allowed to to discharge the flu, uh, the the treated Kumbaga, those uh, uh, water mixtures na nag-pass through the, the the process of filtering, oil filtering uh, equipment, no, uh, will be allowed to discharge the water, no, water. But the oil content, ang, ang na-separate na oil, should be placed, of course, on the slops natin. So, you'll be allowed to discharge on such... Uh, outside special areas as well as uh, discharge also the special areas but a certain uh, rules should be uh, followed okay and as well as in respect to this the Antarctic area uh, 
and discharge into the sea of oil or oily mixtures from ship shall be prohibited if you are on the Antarctic area. We have actually a lot of uh, special areas which are stated in your module. So kindly check na lang the modules and uh, read if what are the boundaries and where is it located. So whenever visible traces of oil are observed on or below the surface of the water, this, the government should or the parties involved should as much as possible perform investigation as soon as possible so that all facts should be collected and uh, proper investigation should be made. Now, what happens if a ship, for example, does not comply with the annex? The ship will be detained you know, until such that uh, that ship will be able to, uh, to fix or to meet the requirements. Then that's the time that that ship will be uh, released from detention. A ship may be allowed to, to sail if, for example, uh, magpupunta siya sa shipyard or sa repair yard. That by that time, uh, i-allow si ship na mag-sail. But once na hindi siya nag-comply sa annex or hindi, siya na -meet, hindi niya na-meet ang requirements and the, the surveyors or the inspectors the, uh, is not satisfied with the requirement or with the... This, uh, the ship nga na ship uh, requirements or ship not meeting the requirements, then that ship will be detained. Uh, by the way, this one, uh, I remembered you know, giving this uh, short trivia with you. We call this one as your wake. Kasi naalala ko siya when I read this one. No? That uh, or below the surface of the water in the immediate vicinity of the ship or its wake. So, ang wake, ang ibig sabihin natin ito, yung tray, uh, parang uh, dinaanan ng barko, the bubble that is that is uh, being generated wherein it's it's where the ship had passed by, no? And it creates that uh, parang uh, it left, uh, it's leaving a mark, no? So, we call that one as wake. To continue, residues which cannot be discharged into the sea in compliance with the regulation should be kept on board, no? And once na dum nagdating kayo sa puerto, you can discharge this one to reception facilities. Take note, hindi po allowed ang pag-discharge uh, ng oil and oily mixture natin sa dagat. You're only allowed to keep it on board the ship and discharge on the reception facilities. Annex 2, Regulations for the control of pollution by noxious liquid substances in bulk. It details the discharge criteria for the elimination of pollution by noxious liquid substances carried in large quantities. So most na naman na nagka-comply dito sa ating Annex 2 are the chemical tankers. Okay? Because they are uh, the ships that are carrying most of the uh, chemicals in bulk. No? And this had came into force, or the Marple Annex 2 came into force in the 6th of April, 1987. The same thing goes wherein the discharge of pollutants is allowed only to the reception facilities and you're not allowed to discharge it at sea. And uh, you will be allowed to discharge once it passed the uh, treatment no or a certain equipment no wherein uh, you will not be allowed to discharge within 12 nautical miles no and strict re restrictions apply in special areas the special areas for annex 2 is actually antarctic area no antarctic area is located at the uh, most bottom part of the earth of course and uh, it is uh, assigned by the IMO as a special area for for the compliance of the annexes, Marple Annexes. Uh, we have this certain book or certain code that we are following for, for the carriage of chemicals or carriage in bulk by sea of dangerous chemicals and noxious liquid substances. We call it as your IBC code or your 
uh, International Bulk Chemical Code. No, I would like to repeat again. Ha? I'm not. Uh, I will not be discussing uh, thoroughly the the topics uh, in this video. You can actually check your modules because it's all in there. And at the same time, if you have questions later on, you can ask me through the contact numbers I have placed on the, the module and of course uh, on the Facebook page that I have uh, given to you. So with regards to the Annex 2, we have pollution categories. No, We have the category X, the category Y, and the category Z and other substances. No, on your modules, they are all uh, described kung anong ibig sabihin ng category X, Y, Z, and other substances. The category X poses a, a major hazard to the, to the environment, to the marine environment. Category Y, hazard. Category Z, minor hazard. And the other substances, no harm. No? The category X, because it, pose, it poses a major hazard to the environment, to the marine environment, so the the uh, discharge is prohibited at sea. And uh, of course, the category Y, limited yung pag-discharge, less stringent naman for the category Z, and uh, no, uh, not subject to the requirements naman, ang other substances not listed. All the chemicals which are covered by this uh, noxious liquid substances, or what we mean by the noxious liquid substances, is all listed in the IBC code, no? So, if it's listed in the IB, IBC code and it is categorized, then uh, ito po yung follow natin. Now, according to Annex 2, we need to have procedures and arrangement manual. No? This manual specifies the operational procedures with respect to the cargo handling, tank cleaning, slops handling, residue discharging, ballasting, and deballasting. and must be followed in order to comply with the requirements of the Annex. We have also the cargo record book. In Annex 1, I think nakalimutan ko ilagay that you have also this oil record book wherein doon ang lahat ng uh, uh, kumbaga movement or kumbaga operations with regards to the oil should be recorded no? whenever you, you're passing it, uh, whenever you have uh, fil your filtering or whenever you are having... Uh, uh, you're, you're passing or discharging, it should be recorded, no? Because our inspectors will actually check on the documents or the, the records that you have on board the ship. As well as they will check if your equipments are working in good condition and, and if they are meeting the standards of the administration. So the flag state inspectors will check on that. And for the Annex 2, what they will be looking at, what they be, will be looking into is your cargo record book. So they are uh, surveys are conducted, no? Every the renewal survey is every five years, no? But an initial survey is being conducted before the ship will be placed into service, no? And every year, magkakaroon ng survey, annual survey, to check if the equipments are meeting the are meeting the 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 requirements no set by the administration on the second and on the third you have your intermediate survey no and for every repairs that you will be doing there is an additional survey to be conducted the surveys are actually uh, defined on the marpol annex 2 na mga uh, notes so you may check on that one and at the same time on our modules. If the Annex 1 will get, will issue a certificate, IOPP certificate, then the Annex 2 or those surveyors who will check for the compliance of Annex 2 will issue you the International Pollution Prevention Certificate for the carriage of noxious liquid substances in bulk. No? Uh, this will be issued, of course, after the after your survey with regards to the Annex 2. We will move on with the Annex 3. 
regulations for the prevention of pollution by harmful substances carried by sea in package form. Now, we have to take note again, Marpol 1, oil, more, uh, Annex 2 is noxious liquid substances. Annex 3 is your H, harmful substances carried by C in package form. Now, lahat, uh, yung mga usually nagko-comply dito is uh, mga ating mga uh, container vessels. no? And of course, those uh, packages, container vessels, general cargo ships, are those and those who are carrying these harmful substances in package form, no? The Annex 3 generally uh, talks about no, general requirements for the standards on packing, marking, labeling, documentation, stowage, quantity subtraction, subtraction division, and notifications for preventing pollution by harmful substances uh, at sea, no? It, this one is actually discussed in your SIM 4 in your subject scene for dangerous goods, no handling of dangerous goods. And uh, this Marple Annex 3 came into force on July 1, 1992. Now, with regards to the Annex 3, we have this IMDG code, which is your International Maritime Dangerous good, Goods Code. Now, if the, the Annex 2 has this IBC or your International Bulk, chemicals uh, code then uh, we have for your annex 3 we have your international maritime dangerous goods code your annex uh, or your imdg code so in your imdg code this will actually give you the information on on how you will be handling this dangerous goods natin no and the classifications as well dito makikita natin now, with regards to the empty packaging, carriage of empty packaging, uh, if your empty packaging no, contains, of course, uh, harmful substances as per Annex 3, it would be treated the same as kung ano yung laman niya. No? Unless necessary precautions has been made to ensure na walang residue, then that's a time na hindi siya i-consider. But once that empty packaging, meron siyang residue, then she will be treated as if that is the kung ano yung laman niya na harmful substance no our packaging should be durably marked no and it should be marked of course with the correct technical name trade names shall not be used for marking uh on our packaging no or trade names alone it should come with its correct technical name and of course uh it should be labeled no properly and indicate that it is a marine pollutant. Now meron mga stickers na makita natin sa packaging. The stickers will or stickers or the this parang yung logo your or your parang uh, symbols natin makita yan sa IMDG code natin. No and, and another one is that uh the packaging no should be durably marked and the marking should stay for at least 3 months kahit immersed siya sa tubig. No? So, as per regulation natin, Annex 3, that uh, all information can still be identifiable with at least 3 months of immersion. No? In all documents relating to the carriage of harmful substances by sea, no, ang mga documents natin should be marked with the word marine pollutant. And, you need to have a special list of manifest of all the harmful substances that you're carrying on board the ship and the location thereof, of course, no? Kung walang ganun, or in lieu of that, you can have your detailed stowage plan. At the same time, you need to prepare this one before the voyage or whenever port state controls or flag state inspectors uh, go on board your ship, no? And conduct inspections and check this one. Jettisoning of harmful substances carried in package form shall be prohibited. Take note of that. It's not allowed. When we say jettison po, we will be, for example, uh, the, the cargo of the ship will be thrown in the water or at sea to make the ship lighter. No? And we are only allowed to jettison once uh, it is for the purpose of securing the safety of the ship and, of course, saving life at sea. Annex 4 
is the prevention of pollution by sewage from ships. No? Kulang ng R. <laughs> Regulations regarding the discharge of sewage into the sea from ships, no? which is Annex 4, uh, came into force into 27 September 2003. Medyo mabago-bago siya. No? Now, the sewage should undergo commuting process or undergo this commuter and then it should be disinfected. No? Ang commuter is parang ikakrush niya yung mga uh, sewage natin into smaller bits kung meron mang solid particles. No? It, it will be uh, into smaller bits and uh, and should meet the requirements no, set by the Annex 4. No? For those comminuted and disinfected sewage no, using the system or the sewage treatment plant, kung ano man, ang nirequire ni Annex 4 natin, no, it should be, uh, you can discharge no, as far uh, at a nearest distance of more than 3 nautical miles. No? But within the 3 nautical miles, you're not allowed. After the three nautical miles, you're allowed to discharge that comminuted or disinfected sewage from the system, no? And, of course, not comminuted or disinfected at a distance of more than 12 nautical miles. So, between the uh, 12 nautical miles na yun, you're not allowed to discharge non-comminuted or disinfected natin na uh, sewage. So, the sewage that has been stored in holding tax shall not be discharged instantaneously. Hindi siya isang bagsakan or hindi siya tuloy-tuloy. It should be moderate at a moderate rate. no? And you could check that one on on the Marple Annex 4 if what are the, uh, what are the technical uh, requirements needed for that. And it should not be less than 4 knots. No? The speed of the ship should not proceed in not less than 4 knots. Uh, there was a question during the Zoom class, no, bakit sir 4 knots? Why not lesser? Because syempre pag 4 knots, mabilis siya. So the tendency is parang uh, it would spread. And at the same time, according to the regulation, there should be no visible traces, no visible traces of our sewage no, whenever you are discharging it at sea. Now, Certificate also is being issued once that uh, the test results of the plant as well as after the survey has been conducted, you will be given the International Sewage Pollution Prevention Certificate. So if you notice, each annexes will actually give you once na nag-conduct ng survey sa inyong barko, may bibigay na certificate because that certificate will prove that you are in compliance or you are compliant with the Regulations stated by the Marple Annexes no, or Technical Annexes. So, uh, for any concerns, if you have questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. There are uh, contact numbers stated on your modules and as well as uh, my Facebook uh, Messenger is always uh, welcome with your, your questions and your queries. And at the same time, please do give me a private message on our M Rooms if you have questions. Okay? So, I wish you all the best and I hope that you learned something from this video and I wish you good luck to your prelim examinations and stay safe always. Thank you so much for watching this video.